Transportation. A new federal program called the Higher Vets Medallion Program will officially kick off in 2019. The program will designate up to 300 employers for their investment in veteran hiring. This designation is designed to make those companies more attractive to veterans in Alabama. Ivy said, we are committed to making sure those who have volunteered to serve us and our country have worthwhile opportunities to establish long-lasting careers. I know that Alabama's employers care deeply about their veterans, and I encourage them to pursue the federal designation so that Alabama's veterans will know how deeply their commitment lies. Saturday morning's chilly weather didn't stop members of the Auburn community from jumping into Sanford Pool. With temperatures in the mid-50s and rain falling steadily, the city of Auburn's sixth annual polar plunge was a chilly one. But that didn't stop participants from jumping in, all in the name of charity. It started in my backyard pool, and uh, after that first year we moved it to the uh, Sanford pool. All the money goes to the Lee County Special Olympics, so it stays local and it stays with, uh, with special athletes in our area that really need it. So. A highlight of the event was Abby dressed in a penguin suit for his very first polar plunge. It was great. We had, we had uh, some great people turn out and uh, help us raise money. In Auburn, Grace Reynolds, Eagle Eye TV. The polar plunge was one of the coldest Auburn has hosted. Over 1,300 people have signed a petition after the School of Nursing announced changes to its admission requirements last week. The petition claims that the School of Nursing will now accept half the number of people for both the fall and spring cohorts. Students are accepted to the program in spring of their sophomore year. The petition claims that the changes were made after students submitted their applications this semester. Dean of Nursing Greg Nushander said that the school is not changing any requirements or decreasing enrollment. Instead, he said the school is, quote, redistribu redistributing the entry points to the major, as data suggests that resequencing these courses in the school will result in better outcomes for, st for students. He noted that the change came so quickly because, quote, once we were aware of the problem, we had a responsibility to act to change it. Waiting for another year or two would, uh, to make the change would not be acceptable. A new ranking released by NICHE ranked Auburn and Opelika school systems height on their list of best schools in Alabama. Auburn City Schools ranked 6th and Opelika City Schools came in at 19th. The ranking was based off of a comprehensive look at the school that included teachers, academics, clubs and activities, diversity sports, administration, and food. The rankings came out as a list of failing schools and the state was released by the Alabama State Department of Education. No schools from Lee County were included on that list. Several schools from Montgomery were listed as failing and Birmingham had the most schools included on the list. With Timothy Bosinger's retirement at the end of the year, new provost for academic affairs Bill Hardgrave sat down with Eagle Eyes Ken Ward for a new show, Plain Talk. Uh, it's, a, it's a great observation. I, I tell you one of the things that makes me really proud about Auburn is that we have consistently focused on quality. You know, uh, quantity is nice, but, but really the emphasis is on quality. And, I tell you, year after year, the quality of students that we get here, it, it's truly unlike any university that I've ever seen have been associated with. And just high, each year, you know, I think, well, we've, 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 hit, the, we've hit the top. But no, each year we, we just get a little bit better on the student side. So, you know, we want to make sure that we continue to have that, that focus on the student, that focus on the quality. And, you know, there's some things that we need to do there. Um, I mentioned earlier one of the things that excites me about the position is the ability to, to kind of affect change across the campus. And I think one of the things that we can do as a university to continue to attract great students and continue to uh, increase our academic reputation uh, is to really focus on the student outcomes. You know, what happens when the student gets through with their degree? You know, what 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 path is that cleared for them? Is it graduate school? Is it you know, medical school? Is it law school? Is it a, a, a job? But what are those pathways? And so there's one aspect of things that go on inside the classroom, and there's, there's a whole other th set of things that happen outside the classroom. 
And, and those things are critically important to create uh, and help develop a well-rounded student. I mean, I look, I look at what you're doing here. And this is, this is phenomenal that you have the opportunity to do this. This will serve you well then as you, as you get and, and ready to go out into the, to the workplace and, and look for jobs. The fact that you had this, you had this experience. Be sure to tune into Plain Talk Wednesdays at 4 and on EagleEyeAuburn.com. This week's pet of the week is Sully. Sully was initially adopted from Lee County Humane Society as a baby, but is now back as an adult. He loves belly rubs, good chin scratching, and snuggles. He does have a chronic digestive disorder that means he'll need to be on medicine and prescription food forever. Sully is looking for a special human to adopt him. He is available for adoption at the Lee County Humane Society. After the break, a look at how one of the richest cats in the country just got richer. You're watching Eagle Eye TV, Here Auburn's news leader. Family. Whether it's a short trip or a long haul, estimated time 47 hours. They will beg. You're hungry? I'm happy to provide. They will plead. Deep, Deep fried, fried butter, butter on a stick. But whatever you do, don't wimp out. Now you're talking. Make them buckle up. They can't hurt. Remember, safety first. Cheese curls. Ah! Second. Are you orange? Here is my handle, and here is my spell. When I get all steamed up, then I shout. Tip, Tip me over and pour me out. Oh. It only takes a moment to make a moment. Cheers. Take time to be a dad today. Grumpy Cat is $700,000 richer after she won a federal lawsuit over the use of her identity. Grumpy Cat's owner agreed to let the Grenade Beverage Company use her picture to endorse a Grumpy Cat Grumpuccino. The company, however, continued to use the cat's image to help sell their other products. Grumpy Cat's lawyer said, quote, Grumpy Cat feels vindicated and feels the jury reached a just verdict. I wonder what a cat would do with all that money. I know, but I also feel like it's good because she protected her image. I agree. Cat. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's all we have for you tonight. Be sure to keep up to date with all of the latest news by following us on Facebook and Twitter at Eagle Eye TV and online at eagleeyeauburn.com. And tune in tonight at 8 for our, for our live State of the Union reaction show. I'm Christy Clayton. And I'm Alicia Richardson. Thanks for joining us in War Eagle.